Hey, thanks for stopping by. My name's Thomas, and this is Zarbo Audio Projects. I wanted to take a deeper look at the Harmonious Table Radio because there were a few details I left out of the build video. Plus, I never gave you a listen, so I wanted you to at least hear what the final version sounded like. First off, let me show you the amplifier I ended up using. It's a 2.1 amp from AliExpress. I'll have links to everything below, of course, but it advertises 80 watts per channel for the stereo portion and 100 watts for the subwoofer section. It uses two of the Texas Instruments TPA3116 amplifier chips, one for the stereo section and one for the sub. I'm feeding it the maximum recommended 24 volts with a power brick with a 6 amp rating. Taking a look at the spec sheet, we can see that the subsection can output 100 watts at 2 ohms, but we know that those figures are at 10% distortion and that's with a 2 ohm driver. The peerless driver that I used is a 4 ohm, so we're likely to be closer to the 50 watt range to be honest, but that's plenty for that driver. It does have a low pass crossover for the sub, which I'm guessing is around 100 hertz or so. The specs don't mention the exact frequency, but it works fine for this project, where the main speakers are small and in sealed enclosures, and where the output drops off pretty sharply after 130 hertz, so it's a pretty good matchup. The stereo portion of the amp is going to be closer to 20 or 25 watts per channel given the 8 ohm rating of the Peerless TC9 drivers, and again, that's plenty. As you can see, there's a heat sink on the board, and I did notice some additional heat coming from the air vent on top of the radio, but nothing to be concerned with, even playing at high levels for extended periods. As I said in the build video, the preamp is also an AliExpress unit, and since I've done a full video review on that, I won't say much about it here, other than it does a decent job. None of these little preamps are great, and this one has issues with receiving input signals from the remote control, and the screen is a little hard to see at times, but it does have acceptable FM stereo reception, and it has knobs. <laughs> that's a big deal for me, so that's why I gave it a try here. All right, let's talk about the drivers. These Peerless TC9 speakers have a nice natural sound as is. They don't need much tweaking. The spec sheet lists the cone as featuring a Pentacut NRSC technology paper cone whatever that is, and a copper cap to lower inductance and reduce distortion. To me, the cone feels like a polycone, but whatever it's made of, it's not harsh at all and it doesn't need much work to make it behave. I used my Dayton Audio OmniMic to measure the raw frequency response of the TC9s in my cabinet, and as you can see, it's not bad. Just ignore the dropping response below 200 Hz. That will be covered by the subwoofer, which wasn't included in this measurement. There's a low point around 800 Hz, and it rises from there. If you look at the original frequency response graph that came from the manufacturer, you'll see that the dip isn't there, but the response rises even more. That's not a mistake. They measure their drivers in a large flat baffle. I measured mine in the cabinet about a foot away, so that accounts for the differences. What I wanted to do was to tilt that rising response down, starting at 900 Hz, to create a flatter response curve, as it did sound just a bit harsh in the middle frequencies. Some voices, horns, violins, and the steel pan sounded a bit too loud or just a small touch grating to me. I ended up using a really easy filter, which I've used before, which consists of just two elements, a coil and a resistor. And we call that an LR filter, where the L is the inductor or coil, and the R is the resistor. After a little tweaking, I ended up with a 0.2 millihenry coil and a 5.6 ohm resistor paralleled in line with the positive lead to each driver. The blue line is the original frequency response in the cabinet, and the red line with the filter added. As you can see, those two components pretty much did the trick. I was able to tilt the response down over 800 hertz a bit, which makes it a little easier to listen to. So that's what you'll hear if you're standing right in front of it, but what if you move to the left or right? Let's look at those graphs. Here is the response if you move 15 degrees off axis in green. Once you get above 3000 Hz or so, it starts to drop off the more off axis you move. And here's the response if you move 30 degrees off axis in orange. Now, this is a table radio after all, and you'll probably be moving around the room while listening to this. So off axis response is important. Alright, enough techie stuff. Let's have a listen and see how it sounds as a completed 2.1 system.
Yep, I'm very happy with what I hear. It sounds more like a home stereo system than a table radio. Minus the stereo separation, of course. But overall, it sounds bigger than it is. My logic in going with the 2.1 setup was to keep the radio section fairly small so I could go down to 120 hertz or so, and then hand off to a dedicated subwoofer to fill in the low end, but one that was also compact enough to hide nearly anywhere. The radio does need the sub to sound correct, though. It sounds lifeless with no real punch to it without the sub. But as you hopefully heard in the demo, with the subwoofer dialed in correctly, it sounds pretty nice. If you'd like to build this radio and subwoofer system, check out the links below for that information. I don't charge for my plans. They're all out there for free on the Parts Express Tech Talk board, just waiting to be built by you if you're up for it. And like I say, you never know what you can do till you try. Well, that's a wrap on this project. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye now. What? <laughs>